Hey guys, this is me Akash here for Weapon Sharma Biology Tutorial. So today I'm going to talk about patterns of biodiversity. So as we all know, biodiversity is the variety of life forms which we see on the planet. So the fact is that this biodiversity is not uniform at all and it changes at different places on the earth based on their latitude and altitudes. The latitude and other altitudes of a place of different places on earth are different. So that's why the biodiversity levels out there at different places are different. So what happens is like the latitudes and the altitudes of different places uh, changes. So the environmental conditions out there in on those area changes and the environmental conditions as the environmental condition changes the habitat which it which it offers which it favors is different for different flora and different fauna. So that's why the biodiversity levels are not uniform at all at different places. So if you see this point, like here, if you see the Tropic of Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, Arctic Circle, Antarctic Circle. So these makes the tropicals. These are the temperate zones. This much little, little geography is out there. These are the poles, North Pole and the South Pole, Arctic and the Antarctic Circle. So the biodiversity here in this region, the tropical regions is more and relatively less in the polar regions and the temperate regions. Okay, so this is a kind of une unevenness out there. So if you see this, the tropical latitudes, greater biodiversity, the temperate and the polar latitudes have less biodiversity. This is a fact, decreased the biodiversity levels, the species diversity levels would be decrease when you go from the equator towards the pole and this is an example of it. Now the question arises why this happens. So species formation is basically a function of time. So if I talk about this uh, equator and this, this region that is your tropical regions, the region relatively remained undisturbed throughout the evolution of earth, relatively undisturbed. So if it's relatively undisturbed, more time is there for a species to evolve out there and to form different kind of species which we form, uh, which we see here on the contrary these polar regions have undergone much more disturbances throughout the evolution of time so it offered less time so the more time is there the more species formation would take place and this area this tropical areas have more constant and predictable environment and uh, this constant environment and predictable environment led to the formation of specific type of niche and specific type of habitat. So specific type of flora and fauna are flourishing out there in these areas at the, as the temperature, pressure, rainfall, all the conditions are relatively constant out there. So and the most important point, solar radiations available on this area is relatively more. If you compare the solar radiations received by different areas, polar would receive less and the equatorial regions would relatively receive more solar radiation. The more solar radiations are there, the higher productivity is out there. Higher productivity means higher species. So if you see this example, you will uh, get to know about two major important terms that will be important in the future slides. The first one is species richness and the second one is species evenness. So I'm going to compare two communities, community one and community two out here. So if you see, there are four types of species present of plants present out there in species community one and community two. So this, if I talk about species richness, it's the same because species richness refers to the number of different species, four here, four here, it's the same. But when I talk about species evenness, it is different. For example, species one, two, three, and four, all are at 25%. The differences between the number of species is not at all different in this case so it is it offers even species uh, species but if i talk about this community too it's six percent twelve percent seventy twelve the numbers are different so it is called it's like the evenness is not there non-even okay so community one and community two offers change species richness but have different species evenness and i hope you got this point now comes the relationship between species and area. 
So if I talk about this, this is area one, this is the areas increase, now the areas increase, area, area two, area three. The area is increasing, the species richness would increase. But the point is that it will increase up to a certain limit only. If you increase the area, the species richness would increase but to a certain limit. And this point leads to formation of a graph which we call rectangular hyperbola. So this is a rectangular hyperbola kind of a graph. So if you see the area is increasing to a certain point and then it is becoming relatively constant. At a certain limit it reaches and it uh, becomes relatively constant. So the number is of species and the area is huge that's why we are converting it into log, uh, log clock uh, scale. So if you convert this into this it would come up something like this and this graph is very important and it's given your uh, NCERT. So this is rectangular hyperbola and we are converting it to log log scale. Now S here refers to your species richness, A refers to your area. It's a simple straight line equation, y is equal to m x plus c kind. So S is species richness, A is area, Z is slope and C is your y-intercept. Y-intercept means the when this line intersects at the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept. The most important thing which we have to concentrate on this graph is your Z. So Z is called the regression coefficient or the slope of line. I have put down the definition of this regression coefficient out here just uh, so that you can get it well. So this is variable x, this is variable y. How these variables are connected to each other is given by the slope that is given by this z value. So z is basically the functional relationship between two or more variables. The relationship between this area and the species richness is given by z. So the important of this z, the slope is lies in these points which are given in your textbook like the z values of range of or of range 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 regardless of any taxonomic group and it offers less steep z. So the thing is if you talk about molars, if you talk about birds, insects, anything in a smaller region the z value lies between z value lies between 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 but when you increase the areas larger areas like continents and all the z value is around 0 0.6 to 0 0.2 that means it is more steep out here in larger areas and less steep out here in smaller regions. Now let's understand what's the significance of this. So this is your graph if I talk about steepness one line is this and one line is this. This is more steep this is less steep okay so this is talking about lower uh, area, small areas and this is talking about large area. So now let's talk about like how this values are coming. So if you directly see if I draw down a line out here and out here on this steeper slope. Now what's the relationship between area and species? Okay. So if you increase the area a little bit, the species richness is increasing this much. On the contrary, if I talk about this slope, the area which I am giving is more, the change in area is more, but relatively less species richness is increased. So if I talk about, if you correlate it with this one, so in smaller areas, the slope is less, it is much steeper, which shows that if you increase the area, species richness would be relatively, no, there would be no greater change in that. If I talk about more steep slopes, value is high. That means if you increase the area a little bit, there would be increase in the species richness. So that was the point which was given in the graph. That is very important to you. Now the thing which comes into picture is importance of species diversity in an ecosystem. The fact is the more species are there in an ecosystem, the more stable the ecosystem is there. So now the attributes of stable community, what a stable community is. So it does not show any variation in its productivity year by year. If year X has A productivity, year Y will have A 
plus one minus one a little bit little bit not much variations in the productivity so the stable community basically does not show any variation in the productivity the second one is it could have it has the ability to resist your seasonal disturbances so the temperature rate for conditions are having are diverse out there but this community is still able to resist those changes that we call a stable community the third one is resistant to any type of alien species attack special alien species which are which is not a part of that community comes into that picture but is it is able to resist that alien species invasion so that makes up stable community and what will eventually make up stable community more species because more species means more stability more stability and these are the points of a stable community so if you realize species richness is essential for an ecosystem health now the point is what's the importance of biodiversity in an ecosystem the points are pretty much simple oxygen production would be more the species richness is more biodiversity levels more forms and build healthy soils filter out water to the sea pollinate crops recycle nutrients and resist wild invasion the all the points are connected to one thing if you understand a very basic concept for example species a is there species b is there species a is consuming different type of nutrients species b is consuming different type of nutrients so like both the species are consuming different type of nutrients so one nutrient will never get exhausted com exhausted completely just think of that a community has all the plants which are consuming the same nutrients what would happen to that the resource would come become relatively depleting so that's a point which is important and that's what making a balance because it's able to restore and recycle nutrients and on the simpler oxygen production is high more different type, types of species more production of oxygen and it's making up healthy soils the nutrient balance the carbon nitrogen phosphorus all these balance are being made up that's why the soils are also uh, even even and like the healthy soil structure is there resist foreign invasions for example a species is uh, coming to a community there would be some species which have the ability to counteract this species alien alien species invasion more species more amount of tools uh, community has so that's kind of it for this video and i hope you enjoyed the video and learned it too so that's kind of it if you like the video please hit the like button and keep watching vipin sharma biology tutorials thank you